There's nothing like money for old rope, especially if the rope is free. The UK clothing and footwear industry was worth over £44 billion in 2005. How can hustlers resist a piece of that action? Not every hustle takes place down a dark alleyway. Many of today's cons happen out in broad daylight, from the comfort of what appears to be a reputable shop. Alex, Jess and Paul have rented this shop to show you some of the most common cases of daylight robbery taking place on the high street today. This is the Vintage Clothing Scam. This is The Real Hustler's latest venture, a vintage clothing store. Jess is putting the finishing touches to the shop and making it look normal, while Alex checks the hidden cameras and microphones. Uh, spot on. Perfect. This is a two-way mirror concealing another of our cameras. It all looks real enough, so what is the team up to? The first customers arrive and are soon <laughs> browsing for a bargain. Anything take your fancy? Um, I like that jumper. That one, how much is that one called? Um, that one is 60. She's right. sorely tempted. It looks like a Chanel original, and for 60 pounds, that's a bargain. <laughs> she decides to buy. You'd be good if you came back in, it was yeah. gone, wouldn't you? You'd be like, oh. And out comes the money. She's a happy shopper. So, what's the con? Well, there isn't a single vintage item for sale in the shop, and our hustlers didn't pay a penny for any of the goods. In fact, they've just picked it all up off the street. To see how they did this, we have to go back to the previous Friday. This is part one of the scam, the drop-off. Our hustlers are delivering fake charity collection bags to householders who they hope will fill them up in good faith, believing that their generosity will help raise funds for charity. With the bags delivered, the team can go home and enjoy their weekend in anticipation of stage two. It's Monday and time for the collection. The bags are now full with donated clothing and other items. The team merely have to harvest their catch. Back at the den, it's the sort. Items are selected for saleability and priced accordingly. Remember, these have cost the team absolutely nothing and every penny made is going into their pockets. This is. Oh, look at this. Yeah, look at that. Look this. at that. That is how you good that layer is on that. Sequence means money. To make sure the garments look vintage, any telltale labels that betray a cheap provenance are removed. Unlabeled, these garments will attract a high price. The next day, the shop is fully stocked and Alex puts the finishing touches to vintage R.I.P. We should really wash some of this stuff. Yeah, it, it just... It's not long before they get some customers. Well, vintage is, is old clothes that have been kept very well and we've had them all reconditioned. So you get the old style, the old cut. Beautiful. Alex is playing the convincer. It's his job to make sure everyone else in the shop feels comfortable about buying the goods. Right I'll, I'll, I'll take that, actually. Do you want to do it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. That's 50 pounds. OK. I like your jacket. Only 55, which is 10% off today. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Cheers, Cheers. Jeff. Bye. <laughs> I'm Jess. So with clothes that cost them nothing, passed off as expensive antique fashion, they get their first sale. And Alex returns his shirt so he can buy it again. Quickly before someone walks in, give me my 45 quid. So we'll reset. Alright, 15 pounds. Uh, Sales rack up throughout the day. Alright, oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's 15 pounds. That's 10 pounds, please. <laughs> the real victims of this scam are the generous donors who put their clothes in the collection sacks four days ago, thinking they were donating to a good cause. 39 much. Charity collection scams are estimated to cost charities over £1 million each year in lost revenue. 
The trading day ends and Paul counts the takings. It's just over £1,000. I'm quite shocked that they actually picked this up off the street. I, I don't know, I thought I got a bargain, but like, obviously not. It is a very cheeky idea because someone has given out the charity shop. The whole point of it is to help someone else. And they're trying to make money of it for the £15. It's, it's not on, is it? If a consumer is suspicious that the charity sack they've got through isn't real, they should check the logo on the sack, check that it is from a genuine charity, check the registered charity number. But also, if they're still suspicious, call up the contact details on, on the sack, check that it is from a local charity shop. And finally, if they think that it's really not genuine, then they should perhaps think about taking it direct to their local charity shop. After we gave back the money to the shoppers, we took all of the clothes and items we had collected and gave them to a well-known charity. Yeah.